All right, here we go with lesson 18, section 7.3. Uh, this is going to wrap up the addition and subtraction formulas. And this is a reminder of what you saw in lesson 17. These are the subtraction, addition and subtraction formulas that are on the formula sheet. And you'll be given these on all exams. And here's our first problem. If the tangent of theta is 15 eighths and secant beta is 13, negative 13 twelfths, for a quadrant 3 angle alpha and a quadrant 2 angle beta, we're going to find sine alpha plus beta, cosine of alpha plus beta, and the quadrant containing alpha plus beta. This is very similar to what we did um, in the previous lesson. The only difference is they're not acute angles. So alpha is over in quadrant 3, and the tangent is 15 eighths. I went ahead and marked that negative 15 and negative 8, and my hypotenuse then would be 17. Uh, beta is a quadrant 2 angle whose secant there is negative 13 twelfths. Therefore, its uh, cosine is a negative 12 thirteenths, and that makes the third side a 5. So if you take the time to draw the triangles in the correct quadrant and label them properly, uh, the, the rest of this is rather easy. And we're going to find the sine of alpha plus beta. So we go to the formula sheet, and it's sine alpha, cosine beta, cosine alpha, sine beta. And now we're going to collect our prize here by simply finding these fractions that belong to each of those functions. And so the sine of alpha is negative 15 seventeenths. The cosine of beta is negative 12 thirteenths. The cosine of alpha is negative 8 seventeenths. And the sine of beta is 5 thirteenths. So we do some multiplication and some subtraction. And we get the sine of alpha plus beta to be a positive 140 over 221. Moving on, we're going to do the cosine of alpha plus beta. So we go to the formula sheet, cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Now we're going to find the fractions, do the multiplication, do the addition or subtraction, and come up with our answer. And the cosine of alpha is negative 8 seventeenths. The cosine of beta is negative 12 thirteenths, minus sine of alpha, which is negative 15 seventeenths, sine of beta, which is 5 thirteenths. Do the multiplication do the, in this case, subtraction, and we get 171 over 221 for the cosine of alpha plus beta. So now we want to ask question three here, which is, what is what quadrant does alpha plus beta reside in? Well, we've got a positive sine, and we have a positive cosine, so that must mean that we're in quadrant one, because that's the only quadrant that has a positive sine and a positive cosine. Now I'm going to ask another question, though. What's the tangent of alpha plus beta? Well, the tangent of alpha plus beta would be sine over cosine. You would multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and hopefully you'd come up with 140 over 171 for the tangent of alpha plus beta. We don't have to go ahead and do the old big formula of sine, or excuse me, tangent alpha plus beta. We can just simply do sine divided by cosine. Moving on to the next problem, if alpha and beta are both fourth quadrant angles, such that the secant of alpha is 5 fourths and the cotangent of beta is negative 24 sevenths, we're going to find the cosine of alpha minus beta, the tangent of alpha minus beta, and which quadrant contains alpha minus beta. We might be able to also figure out the sine of alpha minus, the sine of alpha minus beta based on our answers to A and B. Well, they're both quadrant four angles. Uh, so I've got alpha there as the first one. And it has a secant of a positive 5 fourths, so that means the cosine would be 4 fifths, and the third side would be a 3. I made it a negative 3 because it was heading down. And then I've got beta there to the, uh, to the right, and we told that the cotangent is negative 24 sevenths. That means the tangent would be a negative 7 24 and then our hypotenuse would be a positive 25. Take the time to properly label the triangle in the correct quadrant, and then the rest of this problem is rather easy. Now to do cosine alpha minus beta, I go to the formula sheet, cosine cosine plus sine sine, and again, I've taken the time to properly label the triangles in the correct quadrant. Now all i got to do is rip down the fractions, do some multiplication, some addition, and I'm all done. And i got the cosine of alpha is 4 fifths, uh, the cosine of beta is 24 20 fifths, uh, plus the sine of alpha negative 3 fifths, and the sine of beta negative 7 20 fifths. I do the multiplication, I do the addition, and the cosine of alpha minus beta is 117 over 125. And now we do my least favorite, the tangent function. So this is going to be tangent of alpha minus beta. So you go to the formula sheet, tangent of alpha minus tangent beta over 1 plus their product. 
So notice the numerator and denominator always have a different sign, and the numerator always has the same sign as what you see in the parentheses. Okay, so here's a bunch of math. So the tangent of alpha is negative 3 fourths, and the tangent of beta is negative 7 fourths. But again, we're subtracting those, so you see what happens there in step two. On the bottom, we have 1 plus their product, and those are two negatives, so they come out to be a positive. So go ahead and get 96 as your common denominator. Don't try to um, use a least common denominator. Just go ahead and use the product of 4 and 24, which we did here. So I end up with negative 72, 96, plus 28, 96 on top. And I end up with 96 over 96. I turned the 1 into 96 over 96. I multiplied, got a positive 21 over 96. Come across, you get negative 44 over 96 divided by 117 over 96. And now you see why I stayed with the 96. Uh, because now when I multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, the 96's cancel out, and I end up with negative 44 over 117. So my suggestion is not to go with a least common denominator, just go with the product of the two, and you'll see that they'll be the same on the top and the bottom. They'll cancel out, and you'll get tangent of alpha minus beta is negative 44 over 117. And so we're left to find the quadrant containing alpha minus beta. And if you look here, we've got a positive cosine, which is quadrants, let's see now, positive cosine is quadrants 1 and 4. We have a negative tangent for alpha minus beta, which is quadrants 2 and 4. So that means that alpha minus beta must reside in quadrant 4. Now we could also work backwards and find the sine of alpha minus beta without actually doing it. The tangent is negative 44 over 117. Notice the cosine is 117 over 125. We're nowhere in quadrant 4, so it's a negative for the sine. And my guess is the sine would be a negative 44 over 125. Because if I make the sine a negative 44 over 125, then when I divide that by cosine, I'd end up with my tangent. Eh, you don't have to know that. I thought it was interesting. So let's move on to verifying some identities. Let's make the, see if they can get the cosine of theta plus pi over 4 to equal square root of 2 over 2 cosine theta minus sine theta. And so um, this is where we're simply going to go to the formula sheet. And if you look on the left side here, this is nothing more than the cosine of u plus v. And so it's going to be the cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. I'll show you what we mean. So I go to the formula sheet, and I pull out the cosine of u plus v, which is cosine of the first angle, which is theta, cosine of the second angle, which is pi over 4, minus sine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. In this case, theta is our first angle and pi over 4 is our second angle. Now come down to the next line. I know the cosine of pi over 4, it's square root of 2 over 2. And I know the sine of pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2. I can't do anything with cosine theta or sine theta. But now in that second line, I see, I guess it's the third line here, I see that I, I have a square root of 2 over 2 in common, so I factor that out. And when I do that, I end up with cosine theta minus sine theta on my last line, which is exactly what they wanted me to get. And so this is nothing more than cosine of u plus v. And let's do another one. We've got the cosine of h plus t plus the cosine of h minus t. And we're going to try to make that equal to 2 cosine h cosine t. So this is going to use cosine of u plus v plus the cosine of u minus v. And u and v will be played by, the, played by h and t. So there's a lot going on here. All right, let's start this thing out. And you notice I bracketed it. So the cosine of h plus t is cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Plus, because i got a plus sign between the two, the cosine of h minus t is cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. And you notice I have the h and the t's in there. So when I drop the brackets, because i got a plus sign between the two, I notice that negative sine h sine t and a positive sine h sine t cancels out. And I have two cosine h cosine t's, which is two of them. And so rather quickly, we end up getting this simplified to two cosine h cosine t. And all I did was I just used the cosine of u plus v plus the cosine of u minus v, and I used h and t as my u and my v. And all I did was expand it out, combine my like terms, and I was done. Well, this concludes Lesson 18. Please get to work on the homework.